Greetings, fellow outsiders, and welcome back to Sally Face. We are just about to jump into episode three, which is entitled The Baloney Incident. It's very intriguing, I know, so let's play. Is the audio intentionally glitching? I'm assuming it is. Because we have this red ball that is dancing in front of our face. And the light. Okay, Sally Face. Hello. Is this real? Okay, so this starts us, uh, I've played through a little bit of this before ending the last episode, but we'll see if we can get any more information out of it playing through it just a second time really quick. Am I dreaming? White room. Oh, don't forget what I told you. Find me in the white room. It looks like, is this a room? We are in a white space. Um, do not be afraid. You are safe here. <laughs> it's just, it's just gonna take me a second. Sal, you are safe here, Sal. But you must not speak of this place to others. What's gonna happen if I do? Oh, is this, uh, is this puzzles? The only one who believed you is dead now. The doctor, right? What, and Larry? Wasn't Larry a ghost in this time period? With Sal in his prison attire? But I'm, I'm noticing now there's four different symbols. I'm not gonna have a good time with this, am I? Should I take a picture just in case? What should I do? Run. Huh? Mm. Run! I don't like this. I don't like this. No, 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 no. I did not remember this. Oh no, wait, it's a, it is a puzzle. Now I want to go back. Should I just go back? Wait, I want to do the puzzle. Okay, what happens when I get caught? Does it just like, it doesn't restart me, does it? No, it starts me here. Okay, I'm going back and doing the puzzle. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Oh my God, it's upside down. I was wondering why I didn't recognize the thing. It's cause it's upside down. <laughs> I, I can't imagine anybody got this on their first run through. If they did, that's some big brain moves. Some huge brain moves. Okay, I think I did it. Did I do it? Did I do it? Was that different? I don't know, it's been a while since I played through the full sequence before. Oh, this is different. The truth is... What? What? Wait, do I need to take a picture of this? Hold on, don't move, don't move, don't move. You look so beautiful, I need to take a picture. Also, there's more human aspects of it. And there's zero, 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 zero up on the top. No, there's more numbers. Hold on, let me take a picture. <laughs> I should have a little notebook for secrets. And this one is fading. You must hurry. Is this like binary or something that I don't understand that well? Oh no, what do I do? What? Oh, okay, hold on. Okay, so there's like dashes. When you look at the number screen, I'll try and put it up. And I think what it is, is one, two, three, four, five, six. So with the phantoms like phrasing, you have to get codes. I think that's what it is. So I am going to try and input the codes correctly. We'll see how this goes, but I'm looking at, I'm looking at the screenshots that I took from his dialogue. And I'm I think that's what it is because they're grouped and there's blanks. So let's try. Eight, seven. What do I do? What do I do? What, what do I do now? What do I do now? What do I do now? A journal? You must learn from my mistakes, Sal. We're counting on you. 73 hours left now. What? Be prepared. Have we seen a journal before now? Oh, okay, so I got an extra secret there. Is it true that you are granted special meal privileges because you are afraid of bologna? I'm not afraid of lunch meat, okay? I just, what? Well, it's a long story. Your trial is still a few hours away. I think we have plenty of time. Ugh, fine. Let's talk about baloney. 
<laughs> All right. <laughs> Episode three, the baloney incident with a interesting sound effect. A very moist sound effect. <laughs> Mr. Dudell, Sal Fisher. Hey! Is that the code? Is that a code? I need to find all the secrets. What if I were more than just a doodle? What if? Can't jump at all. We are confined to this 2D space. Hello, are you okay? Does not sound okay. That's all they have to say, so let's keep moving. I like the saxophone going on in the background. What's wrong with your friend? He sought the truth, and the truth destroyed his soul. Now please leave us alone. Your head will frighten the children. Can you tell me where your friend ventured to find enlightenment? He traveled to the wise prophet beyond the fields of death. But a round head like you will never make it. Jerk. Meanie. Let's use the ladder. Hello? Are you okay? What happened to your limbs? Well, I never. How do you feel if I asked you what happened to your weirdly shaped head? I don't mean to offend, I was- Ma, go father someone else. Um, I think this feels like a metaphor for a Sally face, because Sally face has a different, at least a prosthetic, compared to everybody else, and at least in the first episode, there were a couple people that continuously asked, like, hey, what's going on with that? Hello. Are you the platypus? I don't think so. I think I'm a stick figure, currently. Hello, miss. Don't pay any mind to my sister. She's been crankly lately because of the sun. Oh, it's no problem. Our ancestors were mauled by the great beast. Ever since, our people are drawn without limbs. What sort of beast could do that? We do not speak of such things. If you want to know more, you'll need to seek out the oracle beyond the death's fields. Okay, so it looks like we're on a path to enlightenment. Are you the great beast? <laughs> well, screw you too, friend! No, I'm sorry. Don't pay me any mind. My temper rises with the sun. The great beast hasn't been seen for over a hundred years. Do you know where the prophet is? You mean the crazy old hag who lives behind death? Just take that ladder down. It's always a ladder down. All right, goodbye. I'm sorry for calling you the great beast. <laughs> Hello? You shouldn't have come here. Where am I? A dark place. Is this the field of death? <laughs> Everyone's been erased. Horrible things happen when the sun burns out. Alright, so all these people have been erased. Great War of Erasers. Blue. 5782. Do I need to take note of this? Let me take a picture just in case. Oh no. Are you the prophet? I am called in many names by the sticks. Do you know about the great beast? I crawled through the great hole many years ago. It ravages the sticks. For, it ravaged the sticks for decades. Then it was laid to rest by a magnificent explosion in the sky. Most believe the beast to be dead, though we know better than that. Is the great beast the artist that's in this world? The one drawing all of them? What is the great hole? Eons ago, we created a great hole in the uh, papery fabric of this world. A hole that contains all of the knowledge in the universe. How do I get there? What is the truth worth to you? Everything. Oh, I see a break in the fat in the thing. Or is that just the seam of the texture? What a metaphor. It's so interesting um, to me because it that's kind of like 2D discovering that it's 3D or seeing something that's just so incomprehensible. So it makes you wonder even like in our dimension, if we are exposed to something like that. Like, I don't think that we'll turn into a big blob, but it's obviously like, seems like a meta discussion of like, okay, well, we are enacting these 2D characters and that's in their world and they, all they've ever known is the paper where they walk across and are in the second dimension. But we're in the third dimension. What about the fourth dimension or the fifth dimension? The fourth dimension they think is, I think from what I've seen is like time, like being able to move time. Cause you know, in the third dimension, we're able to move around anyway. Let's not, let's just, let's just play the game. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Fisher. 
Sal, wake up. Huh? That doesn't look like math to me. Oh, sorry. Must have dozed off. I already finished the test. I know, dear. You aced it as well. Very good. Just try and stay awake for the remainder of class, okay? Sure, it won't happen again. What are you looking at? <laughs> and Mr. Phelps, eyes on your own paper. <laughs> class is almost over. Make sure everyone has hands in their tests. Hands in their tests before leaving. <laughs> Fell asleep while thinking about dimensional crises. Hey, freak. Leave me alone. Nobody likes a goody two shoes, Sally face. Nobody likes a cliche bully, Travis. Don't you have something better to do? Shut up. I wasn't talking to you. You know, if you took that stick out of your butt, you may actually enjoy yourself for once. Maybe even make a friend or two. Oh, screw you. I have more friends than you'll ever have. You kiss your daddy with that tongue? I'm sure he... Leave Sally face alone. What the hell? Are you all right, Sal? I'm fine. Come on, let's report that jerk. No, don't worry about it. That'll just make things worse, trust me. I've dealt with bigger bullies than Travis before. Sal, you're bleeding. I'm okay, really. Here, let's use my bandana. Aw. Wait, hold on. I... You can't. I'm... Aw. There. Looks like it was just a small scratch. Don't worry, you can hardly see it. <laughs> Thanks, Ash. Aw. Friendship. Dude, what happened? Was it Travis again? Travis again? That prick. I'll kill him. Larry, I'm fine. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Sal's right. If we stir the pot, it could just make things worse. Not if he's dead. Then he'll probably just haunt the school and we'd be stuck with that bonehead for the next two years. Ha, <laughs> says the group skeptic. You know I love you guys, but the ghost stories are a bit much, even for me. So we're really just gonna let this Travis thing go? It's not worth it. Plus, think about it. Who knows what his home life is like? He's got a lot of pent-up rage. There must be a reason. I'm pretty sure he's just angry that they switched bologna sandwich today to tomorrow. Eh. Seriously, I've never seen anyone love the crappiest lunch day so much. It's like a prison meal, and he doesn't even like Pizza Fridays. Who doesn't like pizza? It's inhumane. Maybe he's an alien. Ha! Huh, that's all we need. Psst, Larry, I'll help you kill Travis when Sal isn't looking. <laughs> I heard that. Aw, uh, I like our little group. A good group of friends. The next day. Baloney day. Not the baloney. Knockfell High School. Hey, the gang's all here. Hello. <laughs> Appetizing. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> Does that baloney smell funny to you guys? Um, I thought last week's was a little off-putting, but it seems to be worse this week. I heard it's mean from goat meat. Didn't a bunch of kids call in sick the day after bologna day last week, too? Oh, hey, you guys, don't ruin lunch for me, please. It's the only good part of the day. Group huddle? I'm in. Me too. Count me in. Have fun. I'm gonna stay here with Chug. That's a new character on the left. We need to find out if there's anything wrong with this baloney. Maybe there was a batch of bad beef where it's expired or something. Or bad goats. I'm telling you, dude, this shit is funky. Doesn't taste like no beef to me. That product is most likely a blend of low-cost meat components from different sources of beef, pork, chicken, and turkey. Todd, man, you're making my stomach turn. This is like the hot dog incident all over again. Ugh, I hope not. Sal might be on to oh, Sal might be on to something. There could be an issue with a lunch meat. I'd like to take our sandwiches to the science club. See if I can find any bacteria or signs of expiration. However, it would be helpful to know what the exact ingredients are. Okay, Ash, you go with Todd and help him in the lab. Larry and I will try and get more information on the baloney. Sounds like a plan. Go team! <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> oh, now we get to play. Maple and Chuck. Oh, uh, hi Larry. Hey Maple. Aren't you gonna eat your lunch? My mom made me peanut butter and jelly again. I'm just kind of tired of it, you know? Oh, I mean, if you're not gonna. Of course you can have a chug. Heck yeah! 
Woohoo! <laughs> okay, can we talk to anybody else? Hey, that kid has blue hair too. Travis. I thought I smelled trash. What are you up to? What does that mean? Get, get bent, Travis. Am I just not cool anymore? I don't understand what this vernacular means. Don't you have some sandwiches to attend to? You're lucky it's baloney day. I'm lucky it's baloney day, am I? I love these two. Best friends. Kim, okay. Hi Kim, we wanted to ask about the baloney. Can you tell us where the school buys it from? Why would you want to know about bologna, eh? Something wrong with Kim's cooking? No, no, we're just wondering where- You kids go and sit back in your chairs now, no more question. You think we could just see the package, or- No packages for you, just butts and chairs, go on. What are you hiding, Kim? Well, that was a failure. She always seems so unhappy. I wonder why she stays here. It's like the kids make her sick or something. Dude, what if Kim is poisoning the lunches? I don't know if this town has room for another conspiracy theory, though I guess it's worth looking into. Why don't you go see if you can sneak into the principal's office and look at her files? While you do that, I'll check in with Todd. All right, I'll see what I can do. Bye, Larry, best friend. Okay, so what are we doing again? Can we talk to Travis again? What do you want? Nothing, Travis. Why does Travis have like a pink eye? Or is it a black eye? Hey, Sally Face, how's the detective work going? Not great so far, but we're still looking into it. You guys are wasting your time on this one. I'm telling you, this is a good baloney. Nothing wrong with it. Everything tastes good to you, buddy. Eh, she has a point there, Chuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In any event, I hope you're right. Me too. <laughs> okay, can we talk to Kim one more time? Skedaddle, buddy. Leave me in peace. All right, whatever. Ah, is this my locker? Oh my god, look at the picture! pictures of us from Halloween. That was fun. I'm lucky to have such great friends. Aww. Just some of my textbooks. Todd suggested that I take physics this year and I'm actually enjoying it. The world we live in is fascinating and filled with mystery. Advanced mathematics and physics. Sally Face is a smart one. I've had this backpack since I started going to school here. It's a little worn around the edges. And that is okay. Oh, 578. I see codes. I see code. I see a code. It says 578. Let me write it down. We usually use paper clips to open our lockers. It's faster and we don't have to memorize combos. If I had a paper clip, I could get into the other lockers. Okay, so let's go search for a paper clip. 3.14159265358979232384. That's pi. That's pi for you. Okay, I'm just going to assume that none of these are codes necessarily. Oh, I picked up a paper clip though. Okay, is that good enough? Okay, so we have a paper clip now, which means that we can get into other lockers. Lockers. Ash's locker, Todd's locker, and let's open Ash's locker first. Aw, so cute. Look at them. Some of Ash's photos. One is an older picture of her and Larry. I'm so glad I met those two. Hey, that's me. I didn't know she had this in her locker. Oh, I didn't know she had this. I think Sally Face has a crush on Ash, based on <laughs> the other episodes. Ash's art supplies. Ash and Larry are such good artists. They try and teach me, but I'll never be as good as they are. It's okay, though. I have fun painting and drawing with them, and they never make me feel bad for not being good at it. Clumpy the Mutant Monkey. Okay, so those are the art supplies, right? And then the camera. Ash's Polaroid camera. She's always snapping pictures with it. This should come in handy. I'm sure she won't mind if I borrow it. Should I take it? Okay, and then this. Ash makes these stuffed dolls. I think they're cool. She calls them little dudes. All right, so that's that, I think. I think that's enough for Ash's locker. And she has a little mirror where we can see ourselves in the back. Um, let's go to Todd's locker next. Potato! This potato light thingy was a science experiment that Todd showed us in class. I'm surprised it's still going. Does he replace the potato every now and again? Hopefully. Uh, Todd is never short on supplies for his inventions. I don't know how he does half the things he does. This guy's a genius. Uh, not much of a surprise that Todd's locker is half filled with books. I really admire his passionate curiosity and hunger for knowledge. Engineering volume six, technology today, computer science, UFO mysteries, advanced concepts in modern physics. A lot of heavy topics. Not like heavy, but like, you know, big brain topics. Todd and his boyfriend, Neil, they're always so happy when they're together. That makes me happy, too. Aw, so cute. Okay, um, Larry's locker next. Oh, yeah. This is one of my paintings. I was going to throw it out, but Larry insisted on keeping it. He said, great art doesn't need to be beautiful as long as it conveys genuine emotion. And I feel the shit out of this, man. I really do. Aw, Larry's such a good friend. I think that this is an older drawing that Ash made. She actually thought of Larry... 
She actually taught Larry a lot of what he knows now. She's a great teacher. We uh, may have never become close if it weren't for Larry. Um, and then he has the picture of them at Halloween too. Gen generic textbook is the textbook there. Larry's backpack. We've been through, through so much over the last two years. He's more than my best friend. He's family now. I don't know what I'd do without him. Larry's art stuff. He's so messy. <laughs> In a way, I sort of admire that carefree mindset. Okay, let's look at some of the other stuff here. Oh, there's a couple missing people. Are those kids or just missing persons? Knockfell prep party. Come celebrate your school spirit. Talents show. Football tryouts. Oh, and there's Larry. Should we talk to Larry first before going into the courtyard? Any luck? The teachers are, are all in the lounge. I'm waiting for the right moment to sneak by. Okay, let's go to the courtyard. Hello, hello, hello. So peaceful. Oh, I see a tennis ball. Can I get it out? Smiley tennis ball! <laughs> Why do I need this? Tennis ball. Just a normal tennis ball found in the courtyard. Oh, wait, 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 wait! An old war journal I found. Maybe I can remember exactly where I found it. The pages are torn and I have a strange feeling holding this. Okay. <laughs> Today, I lost everything. It's gone. All gone. I never imagined an our world would end like this. There is no warning to the plague of shadows that invaded. The day began with a trip to the Sky Towers alongside of Evelyn and her children. My company had been showcasing a new line of drifters capable of bending space-time and traveling an even greater distance across the galaxy. Evelyn was ecstatic and couldn't wait to pilot the new model. Standing at the exhibit, I turned to look at Eve, who wore this big goofy grin that was almost too large for her face. Her smile brings a familiar childhood warmth to my heart. She was the kind of soul anyone could ever know and always found happiness, even in trying moments. Yet Eve's smile couldn't withstand the next moment. The events will be seared into my mind forever. A low rumbling noise muffled all their surrounding sounds and was swiftly accompanied by the hideous screaming of the masses. As I watched the smile dissolve from Eve's face, panicked terror settled in my gut, mirroring the look of dread she now expressed. I turned to look behind us where she was now gazing. The shadows were seeping into the tower and had already taken many lives. Evelyn's two boys were across the room staring down over the balcony rail at the chaos below. In an instant, they were consumed by the shadow. Eve let out a shriek so loud, I thought my ears would burst. I had to hold her back from running straight into certain death. A difficult thing to do, considering I also wanted to run to her boys. Yet it was clear that they were gone. I pulled Eve into one of the drifters and quickly made sure she was secure before taking off. As we smashed through the glass, windows of the tower, and then went through the atmosphere, the shadows consumed the entire planet. There was nothing left. Like some insignificant hole in space, where our world used to be, I lost everything. We lost everything. I turned to speak to Evelyn, my mouth ajar but no words came, uh, could form. Her warm spirit had turned cold and brittle, tears were pouring like rivers down her cheeks, and her body was shaking uncontrollably. She's in shock. I pray that we can somehow survive this and that we can somehow find happiness again. Okay, so that's interesting. Missing page. I wonder if we can find, we, there's gotta be a way to find more pages, I'm assuming. Because that kind of reminds me of the doodle thing. Almost like a black hole. Although the shadows seem different. Hmm, I wonder if the story will reveal itself. If there's something, there's, got, there's obviously something way bigger going on here. Okay, I'm gonna check out the rest of the courtyard before going back in. Let's look at the window. The teachers are in there. I need to find a way to get their attention without them seeing me. Maybe, maybe if I make a loud enough noise. Okay, so we're probably gonna have to use the tennis ball for something then. Oh, there's another hall here, hall two. Science lab. Oh, but this is where they are right now. What is this? Oh, a sticky tack. Ooh. Okay, I'm not gonna interact with them yet because I don't wanna continue the story quite yet. I still wanna spend some time exploring. Oh, there's Ash. Okay, Ash, what do you have to say? Hey, what's wrong? The dang closet is locked. I need something in there to test the baloney. I tried to pick the lock like Larry showed me, but now my hairpin is stuck in the keyhole. It's jammed up good. Mm, could use some pliers to get it out, but yeah, they'd be in the closet with the janitor, but he always leaves for lunch. I'll see what I can find. Thanks. In the meantime, I'm going to try and get this out. Oh, can I use the camera with the birds? Are there birds anywhere? Oh, birds. I hear them somewhere. If you guys see any birds, say caca. Caca. So pretty. Do we get a Polaroid? Oh, photo I took of a bird from the courtyard. 
Beautiful. Oh, and the camera. Oh, the camera. I think I can still use it for something else, so I don't think that was a waste, even though there said there wasn't much left. Okay, so I think first I want to help Larry. The teachers are in there. I need to find a way to get their attention. So let's try and use this, I guess. Throw. <laughs> huh? What was that? I don't know. It sounded like it came from outside. I don't see anything. Neither do I. Maybe it was those dang birds again. Did that not work? I don't think we can break the window. Oh, Larry, did you get past? Yeah, good thing you with that distraction, dude. Oh, it worked. I saw her file. Awesome, anything to help us? Well, I had to book it, so I didn't get a good look, really. If you can distract the teachers again, maybe I can just take the file. No, we don't want to draw attention to ourselves by stealing it. All right, you're the boss, Sally, so what should we do? Give me a minute, I'll think of something. Can you use the camera? Ash's camera, use the camera. Use the camera. Yeah, here, use Astro's camera to take picture of the files. Great thinking, dude. Ready when you are. Okay, so let's go through the tennis ball one more time. Maybe it was those dang birds again. They said the exact same thing. Okay, Larry, did you get it? Did you get it? Dude, the file is missing. What? How can that be? No one else could have went in there without you seeing them. Eh, uh, just jerking your chain, man. I got the picture. Larry. Oh, you butt nozzle. <laughs> ha, score. Let's look at it. Okay, Kim Yazi, 1967. I think I know what to do. I'll meet you back in the lab. Wait, hold on. Fair and Way, not Fields, 555 4274. Lunch Lady, Amateur Nature Photographer. Oh, that's why we needed the picture of the birds. Kim has elephantitis. It's not contagious and she is sensitive to it. Make sure the other teachers know. Tell Kim to stop feeding the birds in the courtyard. Other teachers are getting annoyed. That makes sense. Okay, you got it, dude. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, Larry's going back. Okay, Kim. I got something for you. What's this, a photograph? Of a birdie? You take picture, eh? Yeah, I took it for you. Just a small thanks for all the hard work you do. You're a sweet boy, Sally. Thank you. So I was wondering, can you tell me where the school buys the bologna from? What are you so interested in bologna for? Uh, well, uh, my friends and I really like it and want to know where we can get some. It's local made by Mrs. Packerton. She's the one in the... Apartment building. 100% beef. She brings the farm once a week. Here, I give you some extra meats from bringing Kim Knight's photograph. I got bologna. Thank you so much. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> bologna that Kim gave to me. It's slimy and has a strong odor. <laughs> okay. We got, we obtained bologna. Is there anything in the boys' room now? Note. Note. There's a crumpled up note on the ground. Looks like someone tried to throw it out, but it's missing in the garbage. Hmm, couldn't hurt to take a quick peek. I know we don't really know each other and you probably have your opinions of me. I thought maybe if I told you how I feel, things could be different. The truth is I can't stop thinking about you. I'm crazy about you. I think you're amazing, but I know these feelings I have are wrong. It's not the way a boy should feel. Shame soul is being whole just writing these words. My father would kill me, but I can't live in a shadow forever. I just, and then there's a bunch of scribbles after that, man. Is that gonna be important? Is that one of our main characters that wrote that? But it, Unless it's Larry, because the other, um, Todd is like open. And I don't think it would be Chug. Oh, there's someone in the stall. Anyone there? No, duh. Buzz off. Okay, so it's Tra- It's Travis. Travis wrote the note. Travis, were you crying a second ago? Sally face, I- No, what the hell? Can't a guy get some privacy? Um. <laughs> We're not saying the first one. We're gonna be a little empathetic. Um, why do you hate me so much? Because you and your dumb friends are a bunch of people. It's sick, it's not right. God will never love you, why should I? You know, we aren't all actually gay, right? I mean, besides for Todd, Todd is like super gay. <laughs> but that's part of who he is and I think it's wonderful. He's one of the kindest people I know. How could you, anyone hate Todd? Ugh, Travis. You don't even know us. Is your father pushing these beliefs on you or stop being so close-minded? Should we go, like, question, empathetic? Is your father pushing these beliefs on you based on the note? Just because my dad is a preacher doesn't mean he owns me. It's my, I'm my own person. No, you're, we're not saying no, you're not. I don't believe you or yeah, but, hmm. 
The first option just seems like the mean option. I don't want to be mean, and the first two seem mean. Even though Travis is a bully, but like, I think that the way to get him to be kinder is not by like adding on to the trauma that he obviously gets. So yeah, but. Well, you seem so unhappy, man. Are you sure your dad isn't putting too much pressure on you? I bet it's tough being the son of such an intense man. You have no idea what it's like. Um, I do know what it's like. I'm sorry, man, or do you want to tell me about it? I'm sorry, ma'am. Don't feel sorry for me, Sally Face. I don't need your pity. Well, we don't have to be enemies. You know that, right? I think under all of that anger, there's a good dude who's afraid to be himself. If you ever need someone to talk to, if you need to get away from your dad for a while, you can hang out with me. Well, why are you being so nice to me? I don't think you're a bad person, Travis. You know, I don't really hate you or your friends. I didn't really think so. I, I guess. Well, I'm sorry I've been such a bad person. You didn't deserve that. That means a lot to me. It really does. Thank you. And what I said about being here for you, if you ever decide you want a friend, I mean that. Don't push your luck, Sally Face. Oh, here. I was gonna flush this down in the toilet, but I guess you can have it. I found it on your desk. It's an envelope with my name on it. There's an old journal page inside. Oh, we got a journal page. Thanks. Okay, now scram so I can have my alone time and, uh... What? Don't tell anyone about this or you're dead. Or, I mean, just don't tell anyone about this, okay? I won't. Oh, Travis. That's the thing, especially in high school. I think that a lot of people are trying to figure themselves out and rather than um, dealing with it in healthy ways can lash out at people, which is why I think it's important. Although you still set your own boundaries and protect yourself and your mental health and, you know, <laughs> physically even Sally Face was getting abused by Travis, but also being a little empathetic and understanding that maybe there's a reason why this person is lashing out. It doesn't mean I have to take their, their mean comments and their physical abuse, but also trying to be a little understanding maybe can help break that cycle of meanness. As Taylor Swift says, what does Taylor Swift say? I bet you got pushed around. Somebody made you cold. But the cycle ends right now. Cause you can't lead me down that road. And you don't know what you don't know. Someday I'll be playing Sally Face with YouTube. And all you're ever gonna be is mean. I was thinking of that song. Oh, we have to read the journal page. We've been drifting through space for weeks now. The first few days are fuzzy, most likely from being in a state of shock. I forgot about this journal, yet as much as I try, I cannot forget about the shadows. A constant fear persists in the forefront of my mind. Are they pursuing us? Am I simply delaying our inevitable annihilation? Yet if such darkness does exist, then perhaps there is some kind of opposite force that will shine kindly upon my sister and I. Evelyn still isn't speaking much. She absolutely is devastated. I'm not sure that she'll ever be the same again. If we ever live through this, earlier today, I am almost positive that I saw a beacon on our radar. It was a brief flash. But if my eyes were not deceiving me, then that means we are in a range of habitable planet. It is a great distance away, so we've decided to use the remaining power in the drifter to make the jump. This is why I did not immediately act on it. However, our food cartridges are running low as well. We've got enough for a few days at best, so we either risk our lives jumping into a potentially habitable planet, or we risk our lives waiting until our food runs out to see if we can find a better chance somewhere else. I asked Eve what she thought we should do. She's been silent for hours. I'm not sure that she... It blinked again. The computer is saying that it's not only habitable, but it's also te uh, teeming with life forms and is over 70% water. Eve cautiously nodded her head in agreement. This is our chance. In a few minutes, we will make the jump. I'm sweating profusely and my hands won't stop shaking. This will either be the end of my life or the beginning of a new life. Both thoughts were equally terrifying. Is this real? Is this like aliens or something that's now coming into the mix? Because we had like the cult video game like robed figures in the other one and now it seems like this is all space exploration and I don't know if it's real or not. Okay, we're entering the science lab. The gang's all here. Got more baloney. Perfect. Kim said that it's made by a package by Mrs. Packerton? Whoa, no way, dude. She lives in the apartments. How can she make her own lunch meats? Oh yeah, I forgot she lives there. I hardly ever see her. Probably seen her in the building twice since I moved here. 
She tends to return at late hours. I believe that she keeps multiple jobs. Teachers don't get paid as well as you may think, so it's fairly uncommon. However, when Mrs. Packerton is home, she makes quite a lot of noise. It's very peculiar. Is Miss Packerton the one that we saw that was the older woman on the first floor, or is this the one that had like this hacksaw noises, the like comically <laughs> ripped off noises of like, <laughs> like saws and stuff? So what do we do? Should we ask Packerton about this? Uh, odd business since it's hers? Or are you boys gonna get your whole detective thing going? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. What do you think, Sal? Let's do a little stooping before going to Packerton. I don't like the way this is playing out. If something nefarious is going on, it's best not to let Packerton know that we're looking into it. Agreed. Good call, Sally. Alright, why don't you and Larry go check out Mrs. Packerton's classroom while the teachers are on break. Todd and I will finish testing this baloney. Exactly what I was thinking. Okay, we'll be back. We're on the way! Larry, I need you to be my lookout. Wait by the door in case anyone comes down here. You got it. Okay. What do we do? Desk. Dang, she keeps her desk drawer locked. Do you remember how to pick the lock like I showed you? Yeah, but there's no keyhole. A combo lock? Shit, dude. How the hell are we gonna get that thing open? Let me take a look at it. Number combination? Is it pi? 3.14... <laughs> it's highlighted up in the corner. Got it open. Nice one, dude. What's inside? Just a bunch of math papers and... Hold on, there's a hidden compartment. Man, there's some freaky stuff in here. What is it? I'm not sure. Oh no, it's cold stuff, isn't it? Little jars, jars filled with what looks like spices, maybe for cooking. There's numbers on it. I'm gonna take a picture of it just because I never know what could be a code. Okay, and then a skull. Why does she have a bird skull in here? That's kind of creepy. Crystals, they're actually kind of cool. I wonder what Packerton uses these for. It's a Bible. This book looks really old though, and there isn't anything special about it. Strange metal objects similar to Jim's puzzle boxes could be important to take. There's another one of these metal boxes, like the- Shit. Is it happening again? Yeah, I- I'm glitching out of reality? Oh god, what does it say? Oh wait, is this another one of those puzzle things? Okay, let me take the... I'm gonna figure this out. I took a picture of it. Something something... So I don't know what that's supposed to say. Are you sure? You could just be dehydrated. You didn't eat anything for lunch either. It's done. Huh? It's already over, but... Never mind, let's go check in with Todd and Ashley. Wait, so what is that supposed to say? Do I get multiple things? And there was something else I didn't look at in the drawer. <laughs> Let me find secrets. I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to figure out that puzzle at the moment. If I figure it out later or something, I'll let you guys know. Hey guys, we found some sketchy things in Packerton's desk. How are the tests coming? We're not getting any signs of any harmful chemicals or bacteria. However, I think we can all agree there is something peculiar going on here. Whatever it is, let's not mention this to Chug for now. The poor kid almost had a heart attack when they stopped serving meatloaf. Yeah, Ash is right. Let's keep this under wraps for now until we're sure what's going on. Well, I guess we know what we have to do now. Dang, I'm gonna miss the action again. I have to watch Ben until my parents get home. Maybe I can help out after, though. Later that day. Is there a reason the text is orange this time? The overlaying text? I'll need a few minutes to get it ready. That's cool. I'll have to take care of something first anyways. Okay, let's meet up in Todd's room once everyone is ready. Yes, perfect. Cool. Back in the apartments. Woohoo! Oh, Addison Cup, 50 cents. Now they're charging. Please and thank you. Good evening. Sally, how are you on this fine day? Hey, Mr. Addison. I'm good. How are you? I'm swell, young sir. Uh, do you like the new sign? I love it. Thanks to you and Larry, it almost feels like I have my own little tea house now. I do miss giving my tea out to tenants. However, I simply couldn't afford to keep up with that. I'm glad you like it, and I think it's totally reasonable to charge for the tea. Everyone understands. That's wonderful to hear. Uh, any new tenants? I'm afraid not, though we have someone coming to look at our room next week, so hope is on the horizon, I suppose. I'm sure your luck will improve soon, Terrence. And if there's anything you ever need help with, don't hesitate to ask. That's very kind of you, Sal. Thank you. I'll keep that in mind. All right, goodbye. Good day. Uh, we're just helping everyone. Nail? Oh, mail. 
Henry Fisher, Henry Fisher, Henry Fisher, junk, junk, junk. Oh, hey, Sal Fisher, there's a letter for me. No return address on it. That's weird. It's a page from that old journal. I'm finding all of the secrets. <laughs> I'm so excited. Oh, but we still haven't found page three. Okay, but page four, let's read. It's been over a year since I've arrived on this planet. In that time, I've been studying as much as I can about the local society, history, and general ways of the people here. Everything is remarkably similar to my home planet, which has made it easy for me to fit in. I managed to get a job at a local factory and have really been enjoying the music here. I took up the surname Johnson. Since my identifier, Zarinth Camp, 4279 would likely raise some suspicion. Isn't there someone named Johnson? Wait, isn't Larry? Is Larry Johnson? Wait, there's, there's a Johnson somewhere in this apartment complex. Would likely raise some suspicion. For a while, I would go out every day to search for Evelyn. In the beginning, I could have sworn I saw her in the apartment building multiple times. Eventually, it came to the realization that it was just my mind playing tricks on me. I was in morning and had to overcome extraordinarily traumatic events. I will always miss my old life and my family, but it's best for me to focus on my life that I have now. Focus on the good things. Lisa taught me that. Wait! Wait, wait! She's been a great help. I may have lost my mind if it weren't for her. For the first time in my life, I'm in love. I've never felt such a strong connection to anyone before. The best part is that she feels the same way. What a bittersweet series of events this has been. I've been staying in her apartment for about five months now. Later today, I plan to ask her for her hand in marriage. It's similar to a union ceremony back home. She said, yes, we had a wonderful night together. Everything was so perfect. Lisa is fast asleep now, but I'm too excited to sleep. Wait. <laughs> So you're telling me that Larry's father, is this, if this is Larry's father, because Lisa is Larry's mother, is an alien space-time traveler? And his aunt, Evelyn, is missing, according to this? And we're still missing a page from this beforehand, but what? If this is true, that is crazy. And that also explains why he went missing, maybe. Like alien abduction? That is crazy. Now I have to find the other pages. I have to. I have to know what's going on. Mrs. Rosenberg's place. Okay, so Packerton is, is the one with the sawing. Is that what it is? Rosenberg. Oh, hello, dear Sally. You sound tired. You okay? Yes, yes, I'm quite fine. I was just a bit distracted by my thoughts. You know me. Did you finish that book you were reading? I did. You seem to be enjoying it. What's wrong? You didn't like the ending? Most story endings are a lie. We tell ourselves to create a false sense of hope. <laughs> what do you mean? There are no happy endings in real life, Sal. We all get the same terrible ending. Death. Depends on your outlook, I guess. You can't know that for sure, Rose. And even if that were true, doesn't that make life even more precious? It's our one chance to shine as brightly as we can before the long night claims us. That's why I try to live the best life I can, just in case it's the only one I get. Not for you, my boy. Huh? What? Oh, never mind, child. I admire your optimistic view of life. It's something I had lost long ago, I'm afraid. What did you mean by that? Take care of yourself, Sally. Miss Rosenberg, are you telling me I have more than one life? Is that what you mean? What do you want, Sal? Just wanted to see how you were doing. I may be old, but I can take care of myself. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mrs. Gibson does not seem to like us very much. All right, let's go to the other floors and see what's up before we meet up with everybody else. 203? No one ever did move into this room. I guess Addison is having trouble getting new tenants. 204, is this... Was this the crime scene? I don't think it was, right? No, this was the, um, Charlie's place. This was Charlie's place. Man, that spill is still lingering. Still? How long has it been? Months? Jeez. It must be pungent now. And then 202? Oh, this is Todd's place. Todd's parents. Hi, Mrs. Morrison. Hey, Sally. Are you boys off to a another adventure? Something like that. I think that's just so wonderful. Life is filled with potential adventures and beautiful mysteries that are just waiting to be explored and experienced. You're totally right about that. Yeah, just gotta seize the moment. But sometimes it's nice to relax on the couch after a long day, you know. Ray and I were just watching some television and then he passed out right like a little baby. <laughs> Isn't he the cutest? Uh, sure, I guess so, but you guys don't have a TV. <laughs> yeah, it's so nice without all that noise. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I better get going. 
I think they were enjoying some other recreational activities. <laughs> if you ask me. Okay, so they're here in Todd's room. So I'm not going to interact with this yet. Because I don't want to skip finding secrets. So we're going to go look around. Floor three time. Hey, Jug. What's wrong? I keep hearing creepy noises. Like, what kind of noises? You know, creepy kind, like scratching and moaning and stuff. Maybe it's just some nice in the walls, or is the building creaking? It's an old building. Mice? That's not any better. I bet it's nothing. You want to hang out with me and the other guys? No, no, it's okay. Thanks, though. I can tell you guys are up to something again. Last time I came with, I couldn't sleep for a week. Oh, yeah. I was supposed to tell you Megan said she's sorry for scaring you. <laughs> she's very sweet once you get to know her. But you kind of bolted right, uh... But you kind of bolted right when she came out. I know, I mean, I bet she's nice. I tried, that's just too scary. Well, if you don't want to be alone, you're always welcome to hang out with us. I know, thanks, Sally Face. Why are you standing here? I'm waiting for my parents to get home. They should have been back already. Is there anything I can do? Got any chocolate? Chocolate always makes me feel better. No, sorry, don't have any. Let's go, oh, okay, that's it. All right, uh, 304. Hello? Hello? Is anyone home? Huh, I could have sworn someone lived here. Did someone live here? Who lived here? There's no oven or fridge. Oh wait, I forgot! Do I still have the gear boy? I don't have the gear boy. Where'd the gear where'd my gear boy go? My super gear boy. Okay, we're just gonna leave. 302. Whoa, we've never been in this in here before, David. Are you Sally Face? What you up to today? Hey David, not much. Just got home from school. Aw, oh, I thought you were on a break. The college students are on a break right now, but our break didn't start until the end of the month. Oh, gotcha. Uh how have you and Sarah been? You know, just a couple of loves but sees as happy as you can be, right, babe? Is that Sarah? <laughs> hey, oh hon, don't make me blush in front of our friend. Love you and stew, babe. Oh, what's that? Yeah, so we've been having some trouble sleeping anymore. You know, it's funny, but I think it's because those college kids are on break. I guess we kind of get used to the noise they make. Well, they only have a couple more days of break, so everything should be back to normal soon. Ah, that's great news. Great news indeed, Sally. All right, David, can I go next to you? Did you cover up the windows with newspaper? Is that what it is? All right, let's leave. <laughs> Thanks, David. Great time, great time. Real one, they're on break this week. Okay, no college students to interact with. Floor four. We're on floor four, right? Sal's place, yeah. Anything at all? Oh my god! Oops, sorry, Gizmo, didn't realize you were in here. <laughs> Gizmo's having a spa day, apparently. Note, Sal, I had to go back into work again tonight. I'll be home late. There's some leftovers in the fridge. If you don't want to eat with Lisa and Larry, I'm sorry I haven't been available much lately. Maybe we can go to something this weekend. Love, Dad. Sal's room. Edward shovel hands. Oh, super gear boy. Thank you. That's what I needed. Okay, what did I get? A teacup? But I don't have 50 cents yet. And there's a picture of Megan down there. And then my room. I mean, dad's room or father's room. What is this? There's something underneath the bed. It's, it's an old photo of mom. I thought they, dad had threw them all away. Hi mom. I miss you. I hope that you're at peace. There's a handwritten note on the back. Henry, you are my sunshine in the darkness. I can't believe we're going to have a little boy. I'm so unbelievably happy. Everything is just perfect. Love you always, Diane. Aw. We don't get to see the picture, though. Dad's computer. Dad's computer is on, but I don't know his password. Maybe I could figure it out. Henry Fisher. What would the password be? 14? N is the 14th, and then E is A, B, C, D, E, 5. Oh my god, I can't believe that just worked. It won't turn, on, turn back on, I hope it's not fried. Wait, it didn't work? I just broke my dad's computer? Oh, there's something on the ground. There's something on the ground. Sally face, it's not, that's not important right now. It did work, just not in the way that I thought it was going to. Where did this come from? Please tell me it's a page. It's another letter with my name on it and an old journal page inside. Yes, I'm obsessed with journal pages. Page eight, okay. 
The old woman that was the first to greet me in this world, her name is Alison Rosenberg. Most call her Rose. This morning she told me a story of how she came into this place. If it's true, that would mean she is well over 100 years old, possibly over 200. It doesn't seem very likely considering the average lifespan on this planet is around 70. Rose requested that I meet her later tonight. She said that she has something important to show me and that there was a sense of urgency to her word words. When I declined, she clutched my sleeve and said that there would be dire consequences for denying fate itself. I pulled my sleeve free and walked away. I don't have time for this delusional woman's games and I certainly don't believe in fate. Though as I sit here with Larry, Larry, I'm starting to get a sinking feeling in my stomach. Rosenberg's words echo through my head. Why am I so haunted by foolishness? I need to avert my thoughts from such things and back to reality. Look how happy Larry is playing his video game. He gets so mad at these little pixels on the screen and so elated when he fin finishes a level. I wish I could show him the neural games of my world. He would have loved those. Anyways, Lisa should be back soon uh, and I'm going to make us a nice dinner. Interesting. Okay. So, if it's true, that means Larry's dad is a space explorer, potential alien? Is he even human, or he is human, just another planet? How do I use the, the boy again? Okay. Where am I right now? Hey, you're new, Robert. Yo, what up, little bud? Not much, just a typical day. That bad, eh? Uh -huh. How have you been? Everything's straight, my man. Can't complain. Thanks, Robert. Oh, how's business doing? Business is great. What is it that you actually do? I sell crack cocaine. Robert! <laughs> oh! Nah, nah. I'm just screwing with you, bud. When my granddad passed, he left everything to me. Well, was he like a millionaire or something? Nah, but it was enough money to start up a little business I had brewing in the old noggin. I tripled that money within a year. From there, the company just kept growing. Now I barely do anything. Just show up once in a while to check in and do meetings and shit. That's about it, though. It's a pretty tight gig. 25 and practically retired. Seems like you worked hard to get there, though. You better believe it. Busted my butt up until things took off. Just wish my pop was here to see my success. I bet he'd be so proud of you, man. That's a huge accomplishment not many people could pull off. Thanks, little bud. He's got money just in the safe over there. Uh, what's with the safe? I don't trust banks with my money or any big corporations, really. Don't you own a big corporation? Well, yeah, but that's different. That belongs to me. Uh, why do you live here? I mean, you could afford to live anywhere. Why live in this cheap apartment room with hardly any furniture? I got all I need right here. What do I need? A big old house filled with fancy things. Can't take that shit with you when you're dead, huh? Uh, just extra weight, weighing you down. I like to lay low, live my life doing what I like. Go wherever, whenever. No strings attached, kind of lifestyle, you feel me? Yeah, I do. I think that's cool. I don't know what I do without my TV and video games, though. <laughs> well, you gotta do you, little bud. Everyone's different. All right, bye, Robert. You seem nice. Um, can I do anything else in the apartment, though? I don't think so. Hmm, I bet I could use a sticky tab to keep this poster up. Oh, it worked. It's an alien. Sick, I couldn't get that thing to stay up. Here, a quarter for your troubles, bud. Just a quarter? <laughs> yeah, thanks. My pop was loaded and he used to give me a nickel for mowing his lawn. At the time, I thought it was just a cheap steak, but he was teaching me a lesson, teaching me the value of working for it, you see? Yeah, I think so. Thank you, Robert, anyways. <laughs> I do appreciate it. So the quarter, uh, we needed money for something down below, right? Let's go into 403. Because we have the Gear Boy now, which I kind of want to explore some of the locations that we know have activity. Hello, Sal. Hey, Mrs. Sanderson, how are you? I try to keep myself busy, otherwise I'll lose my mind. I fear that I'll never be able to leave these dreadful walls. You still haven't seen any bright light or anything? Unfortunately, no. I don't mean to sound ungrateful, though, babe. It's just so much more bearable here without that horrible demon running around. It's just so terribly grim, devoid of hope. It's kind of hard to explain. I'm sorry, I wish I could help more. Todd and I have been doing a lot of research, but hold on a moment, love. Yes, right here, talking to me. Okay, sure, yes, okay. I understand. I will. Sal, I meant to give something to you. Who are you just talking to? I apologize, sweetheart. I've got to go now. Please take care of yourself. But... It's another page! I'm so excited. It's an envelope with my name on it. It's one of the missing pages to that old journal. Okay, let's open it up. Uh, missing page... Wait, did I already do eight? So it's seven? 
A, p a few years have passed since my last entry. For the most part, everything ha has been great. Life has its ups and downs, but overall it's mostly good. I'm working my way up in the factory. Larry is happy and healthy, and so is Lisa, and the three of us have a lot of fun together. We have another baby on the way. What? This one wasn't exactly planned, but we couldn't be more excited. Aside from these bright spots in my life, I feel as though a darkness is lurching from the unseen corners. Something is wrong with this building. Things happen without explanation or rationality. Most people still here... Uh, most people here still believe in the concepts of gods and ghosts. They would call this building haunted. Those archaic ideologies may hold some small trace of truth after all. Lisa claims she's never seen anything unnatural happen here, and it's just people's imaginations. This time, I'm positive that my mind isn't playing tricks on me. I have nothing but respect for Lisa's scientific worldview and how... Uh, could she believe in such things if she's never seen proof with her own eyes? I don't hold that against her, but for now I will keep uh, my findings to myself. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Okay. Um, so it seems like the gear boy might be a means to get more pages too. So the places that I know have a lot of activity, I'm gonna try and explore. No one lives here in 404. Also that new apartment. The um, one that opened on like floor three, I'm gonna go and see if that one has any gear boy stuff. 304, okay. Let's open up our gear boy. Hello? Hello? <gasps> yes! Yay! Another letter with my name on it. I wonder why these are being delivered to Sally, though. Okay, page six. Larry Johnson, our perfect healthy baby boy. I'm still reeling from yesterday when our child was born. A large weight was lifted from my shoulders and joy came flooding in to replace it. I knew from the moment I saw him that I'd do anything for him. This is a life form I've created with Lisa and we both feel a tremendous unconditional love for our boy. When we first saw him, we wept tears of joy. I hope we can stay this happy forever. I took the whole week off so that I can be here with my family. Um, what is that? Blank. As I was putting little Larry to bed, something strange happened. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw a shadow that moved quickly across the room, knocking over a box of toys. Fear coursed through my veins, and my heart was pounding so hard that I thought my ribs could break. Flashbacks from my past flickered through my thoughts. The plague of shadows. My home world, Evelyn. Then I looked down at Larry's face, and he smiled at me. It was likely just a baby gasp, but his expression claimed, calmed me down. He's safe, I'm safe, Lisa is safe. If the plague had followed me here, it would have been destroyed, uh, it would have destroyed this world long ago. It was just my eyes playing tricks on me again. I've been stressed out lately and haven't slept well in weeks. I must put these fears behind me. I have to, uh, to be healthy and alert so I can be here for my family. They are my number one priority. Okay, so the shadow figure is actually a, like, alien demon from another planet? This goes so much deeper than th what I initially thought. Okay, Miss Rosenberg is lighting up again. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that does not look comfortable. <laughs> She's gone? Miss Rosenberg, hello? Where are you? Miss Rosenberg? Goodbye, Rose. I get the feeling that you were ready for this, whatever it is. I hope that wherever you are, you're happy. Did we just kill Miss Rosenberg? Huh, there's a letter here with my name on it. For the sake of secrets? It's a page from that old journal. I'm sorry, what? Sorry? Okay, page four. It's been over a year since I last arrived on this planet. Oh wait, I already read this one. Is it page three? Okay, I've never met so... Wait, oh, I've never felt so utterly hopeless. She's gone, just vanished. How is this possible? Where is Evelyn? The jump was a success and the planet is beautiful, filled with lush forests, fresh air, and small creatures for nourishment. Eve would love it here. One moment she was right next to me, then in an instant, right after the jump, she was gone. It's not possible. I can't understand how this could happen. I've been searching the forest for days, hoping that there could be a chance she's here somewhere. Maybe when we warped, she, I saw her. She was calling for help, but then I started running and yelling her name. She fled. I lost sight of her but have a good idea of the general direction she is heading. If there was a miscalculation in the drifter, I suppose it's possible that she was teleported directly to the planet. It seems highly unlikely, but I don't know what else could explain this. I have to find her and approach this with, with caution. She could be the tra in a traumatic state, confused and panicked. I've come across a small town. Humans. Early civilized humans. The odds of this are astronomical. The drifter would have changed our world had it not been destroyed before they went to market. 
We came across a small brick building. Standing outside was an elderly woman. She was the first contact I had with these people. She welcomed me as if she had been waiting for my arrival. Despite the kindness she presented, I could sense something hidden and dark deep within her eyes. I felt uneasy around her, yet also a strong sense of familiarity, as if we knew each other in another lifetime. I'm not one to normally believe in such things, but the sensation was potent. The old lady invited me into the building, where she left me on my own. It was then I met a younger woman closer to my age. She was strong, kind, and beautiful. I was so overflowing with emotion that I broke out into tears. A normal stranger would have avoided a grown man making such a scene, but not this woman. She took me right into her arms. This only made me sob, uh, made my sobbing worsen. We went into her apartment and she sat me down and got me a blanket and some hot coffee. A long conversation was to follow. Of course, I couldn't tell her the full truth. How could I? It would sound I would sound like a lunatic and quite possibly find myself imprisoned or worse. I told her that I had left my home and my family and I didn't know what to do. She spoke with the owner of the building, a man named Terrence Addison, and said that they had an extra room and I could stay in, that I could stay in on the fifth floor. She's a lovely woman, Lisa Garcia, on the fifth floor. The fifth floor is where the ghosty stuff happens. I still feel bad about Rosenberg, sorry. Hopefully I exhausted all the dialogue before accidentally uh, sending her off. Miss Gibson? Oh, wait, what? Oh, that was different dialogue. Oh, well. But I don't think we can do anything with that. Oh, that's what I needed the money for. I can get a cup of tea. Hey, Sal, how can I help you? Addison tea, please and thank you. Coming right up, young sir. Is that also why I picked up a teacup, didn't I? There you are, enjoy. Hey, there we go. Okay, so we got some tea. Okay, I'm going up to floor five now. Partially because I want to use this super gear boy, but also because, hey, there's something green in there. Can I go in here now? Newspapers? Newspaper two, the front page of an old newspaper, father and son go missing. It says that they vanished without a trace, leaving the mother broken and alone in a once happy family's home. There's an old newspaper clipping nailed to the wall. It's about a boy who shouldn't be alive, who survived an accident that killed both of his parents. Woman and her child abducted by aliens. This has to be one of these joke papers. Okay, I'm getting the super gear boy out. <gasps> aliens? Ah! It's a letter with my name on it. It's another page from that old journal. Oh, yay! I'm so excited. Okay, this is page five, right? I'm having nightmares again of Evelyn. We're sitting in the drifter. I look over at her and she smiles. Then her smile melts away in a burst of flame that engulfs her body. I struggle to get my seatbelt off, but it's stuck. Eve becomes a charred corpse right in front of me, screaming it in agony. That's when I wake up. It's the same dream every time. I'm starting to wonder if this is a repressed memory. Did Eve burn up when we made the jump and my mind simply blocked this out? If that's the case, why am I dreaming of it? It's unsettling to say the least. The timing isn't so great either. Lisa and I are expecting a baby within a few months. I'm both excited and extremely nervous. Prior to the conception, I did extensive research into the biology of humans on this planet. I'm no biologist, but from what I could understand, we are of the same species. Well, I can't imagine that we are 100% exactly the same, but we are so close that I think this will be okay. I've even been to local doctors and had my blood tested and everything. Of course, I didn't tell them that I wasn't quite from around these parts, but it all came up as fine. This gave me an intriguing thought. Even though our solar systems are thousands of light years apart, it could be that the humans of our two planets share some kind of common ancestor. And if so, how many other planets are out there harboring human or humanoid life? I wonder if Larry has any special powers then because of his dad since his dad is like I don't know if it's like a time traveler or alien or what <laughs> they have a Ouija board were they playing with us even with the spirit board Megan never comes out when Todd and Ash are here I think she's just shy around strangers hey this is still locked up feels more peaceful in the building since we got rid of that demon how did we get rid of the demon again okay gear boy here I'm assuming it's gonna be Megan, right? Yeah. Hi, Sally Face. Hey, Megan. Have you seen my daddy anywhere? No, uh, sorry, still haven't seen him. Oh, maybe he's passed on to a better place. I guess that's not so bad. And everybody here isn't so scared now, too. Even Mommy started talking to me a little bit. That's great, I'm glad she's finally speaking to you. Me too, <laughs> I hope that Daddy is happy wherever he is. I'm sure that he is. Oh, I forgot Mommy told me that you would play hide and seek. I gotta go, I'll see you later, Sally boy. Ah, okay, Megan. I'll see you later. Have fun. Bye, Megan. 
Are you gonna leave me a page? No. Megan's necklace, even though she can't wear it now, she's happy to have it close by. Ooh, is that Addison tea I smell? Yeah, I just bought a cup. Hey, would you mind leaving that tea for me for a bit? I just love the aroma. It's so common to my soul. Sure, I don't really care for the tea anyways. You're the best, Sally. Hey, you know what? I've got something for you. Here, I got this chocolate bar for my Todd, but he didn't want it. It's lost your gain. Hee <laughs> hee. Thanks, Mrs. Morrison. Thank you. Oh, so we got a chocolate bar. You know, <laughs> Wacky Willy's milk chocolate. You know who would like this is Chug, I think. Okay, I don't think I can give it to Chuck, so I don't know what I need to use it for yet. That's weird. Okay. Um, the last place I haven't looked is the basement. So once we do that, we will go up and actually continue the meat of the story. Vending machine? Still empty. One B. Larry's- wait, what's this? Looks like Lisa got a bouquet of flowers from someone. There's a note. It says, get well soon. Wishing you the best, Henry. Who's Henry again? Henry! Henry's our dad. Are you trying to like, get with Lisa, my dude? My dad? <laughs> oh, hey Lisa. Hi Sal, how are you today? I'm okay, how have you been feeling? Didn't the doctor say to take it easy for a while? Oh, I'm just fine, sweetie. Don't you worry about me. Besides, we got problems and the plumbing needs my attention. There was green stuff on the fifth floor. And just, Mr. Addison has enough on his own plate to worry about. I can't keep lying around all day. Isn't there anything we can help at least? I appreciate your offer, Sal, but I can handle a little plumbing work. It's really no problem. Plus, moving around some will do me good, too. If you say so, just don't push yourself too hard, okay? And if you need any help, just let us know. You got it, bud. Thanks, Sal. Hi, Sal. Uh, what's wrong with the plumbing? There's some kind of goop clogging our pipes. It's weird, the same thing happened a few years back too. No idea where this stuff comes from, but once I get all the pipes cleaned out, we should be good to go. How's Mr. Addison? Oh, poor Miss Mr. Addison. He's a kind soul, but I'm afraid he's a bit of a frail man. With everything going on, we should do our best to keep him optimistic. He may put on an upbeat attitude, but he's been so stressed lately that he's crying himself to sleep at night. Uh, plans for the weekend? My dad and I might be going out to see a movie or something. Maybe you and Larry could come along. I bet it'd be good for you to get out of the house for a night. That sounds wonderful. Thank you for the invitation. I would love to join. How is Henry doing, by the way? He's a sweetheart, your father. I hope he's not overworking himself. Cool, that'd be fun. And I know my dad will be happy to have you along, too. He does work a lot. I think it helps him cope with his depression. Though he seems like he's been making some positive changes lately, which I'm glad for. Oh, I know I've said this a million times, but I'm so sorry that you two had to go through so much hurt. Let's get you and your father out for some fun times this weekend. Get that positive energy flowing again. Sounds good. All right, bye. See you around, Sal. Lisa's so nice. And she married an alien. And then last thing is here, Larry's room. Hmm, a blank canvas. <laughs> Cute, there we go. Aww, achievement unlocked dead potato. Okay, anything else here? Can we play the... Look like I'm just about to sneeze. Not a good time for that. Okay, so we can't go outside. I think I've done everything that I possibly can do in terms of secrets. I haven't been able to find any more journal pages. So we are just going to go and continue the story now, finally. <laughs> We've taken a lot of detours, but that is okay. Because so we search for secrets, always. Todd. So we can talk, we can do that. Uh, let's talk first. Are you ready? Uh, not yet. I'll be right back. Okay. Let me look at this. What's with the new gadget? Oh, you aren't supposed to see that yet. It was going to be a surprise. What is it? Among other things, it's a portable amplifier with custom effects that can be used to upgrade your guitar. That's amazing! Todd, you're a genius. I can't wait to try it out. Unfortunately, you'll have to wait a while. There's still a few ports I'm working on in the mail. Besides, we have more important things to focus on at the moment. Right. Okay. So that's that. I don't see anything else. Hi, Bob. <laughs> Are you ready? I am ready. Finally. I've tapped into the security cameras and we will be able to loop footage of an empty hallway until you get back. Be careful. Into our security cameras? Okay. Like in the apartment. I've, for I've gotten so detoured by aliens, I forgot about the baloney. <laughs> Got it. Nice. We should be, we should go quick before she gets back. What's going on? 
Dude, it smells like ass in here. Ass and old feet. Good lord, we better make this a short visit. I can't take that stench for too long. Check out that painting. What if Packerton really does just work on a farm? I don't know, these paintings give me a weird feeling. Like a cold chill. Whoa, yeah, I feel it too. Let's look around. It's a neat old radio, but it won't turn on. Must be broken. Okay, we have bedroom one. We have a clock. Hmm, the clock hands are stuck at 314. If I try and move them, they just go right back. 314. That's got to be a code. So let me write it down. There's a, a big thing of diapers. Do you think Miss Packerton uses them for herself? Probably, dude. Packerton is ancient. There's a lock on the fridge. Freezer. It's filled with rolls of bologna along with some frozen vegetables and other various foods. Nothing out of place, really. Anything strange in the fridge? No, it looks like normal groceries and stuff, but there's a padlock on the freezer. Can you get it open? Yeah, just give me a minute. Okay, should we go try and explore other places? Let's go to the bathroom. Ew! Bathtub. When's the last time she cleaned this room? It has the green stuff in it, though. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, gross. There's a big old log in there. Got it, Larry. Wait, I don't want to see it yet. I want to explore some more. Bedroom one, it's locked. And there's some weird mechanism on the doorknob. Dang, it's locked. Can I do anything to open it? I don't think so. Strange metal thing, it was found. Oh wait, that was found in Miss Packerton's desk. Okay, I guess we'll go talk to Larry. I don't know what else to do. All right, let's open it up. I knew it. <laughs> Did you have to draw the tongue? <laughs> it is goats. I called that shit, man. Also, gross. I feel like it can't be that simple. Let's see if we can get into those bedrooms. All right. There's blood on the floor now. Oh, can I use my gear boy? I can. <laughs> oh, the goat. That's so sad. Um, hi, little buddy. Ba, 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 ba. Is that supposed to be a code? One, two, one, two or something? What the heck was that? A ghost goat, apparently. They probably shouldn't be surprising to me at this point, but I definitely did not see that coming. All right, is there anything else I can do? I'm assuming that's just gonna be the same. <gasps> the radio's working now. Change station? Wait, what was the thing on the clock? The thing on the clock was 314. Well, let's just go through all of them, I guess. I don't know any of those differently. Does one of those unlock it? Let's talk to Larry. This is a bizarre lock, dude. I'm not sure if I can pick it, but I'll keep trying. Is Larry eventually gonna be able to lock it? All right, 314, they're locked. The clock is working now, okay. So 314 was what it was stuck on before. 578 is the thing from the locker, but I'm gonna try the goat thing. <laughs> I'm gonna try 1212 based on the boss. Are you kidding? That unlocked the first bedroom, let's check it out. How do we unlock the second one though? Cause I haven't seen any codes. There's someone in here. Oh my God. Hello? Uh, Mr. Packerton, hello? I don't think he hears you. You're right, looks like he's in some kind of vegetative state. Man, this is screwed. And definitely where that rancid smell is coming from too, yuck. Let's get a quick look around here and then get out of here. Why didn't she take those out? All of these papers are talking about the death of Mr. Packerton. If he's dead, then who's lying in that bed? What I would wanna know is why the hell there are so many uh, poop-filled diapers in here. Like seriously, what the heck? I know what you mean. This apartment is making me super nauseous. Oh my God, they're even piled up. They're like blurred out where we're viewing this. You don't think she uses the, no, no, never mind. I don't even want to think about that. I think if the mystery ingredient was human poop, Todd would have seen some signs of that in the lab, right? I guess so. Well, honestly, I have no idea. Let's just hurry up in here. Gross. Anything else? Mr. Packerton? Are you Mr. Packerton? Blink if you can hear me. Hello? Are you Mr. Packerton? So he's not responding to us at all. What is that mysterious liquid that's going into him too? Oh my God, this is really disturbing. 
Can I use this? Oh, I can use this. Young child, please help me. How can you be? Are you dead? I am in between, suffering for what seems like an eternity. Did Mrs. Packerton do this to you? We were in love once, or so I thought. Yes, this is her doing. Please, you must help me escape this endless agony. <laughs> What's in the baloney? Baloney? I'm afraid I don't know much about that. This room is my prison, my tomb of infinite sorrow. I can never leave this state. How can I help you? You must unplug this horde machine. But isn't that... Wouldn't that... It will end my suffering. It will free me of this torment. But... Are you sure? Please, child, I beg of you. You must hurry before she returns. Pull the plug! Oh, no! I don't know what to do. This wasn't in any of the journals, right? The alien journals? All right. I'm gonna say yes. Just because that's not a fate I would wish on anyone. I hope that was the right thing to do. You didn't have a choice, man. The poor guy was in so much pain. It's what he would wanted. He did literally tell us through the Super Gear Boy. Yeah, I guess so. It's just... Oh, man, she's back. Quick, behind that dresser. Aw. We're so cute. Best friends. If we don't make it out alive, I... I love you, dude. I love you too, man. You're the best friend I could have ever had, you know? Same to you, little bud. Oh, best friends. Oh, Larry's protecting us. <laughs> it's Ash. Hey, sorry to ruin the moment, but like, what the hell is this place? Ashley, you scared the crap out of us. I can say that. <laughs> man, I'm glad to see you, Ash. I thought we were done for. I thought you had to watch Benjamin. My dad came home early, so I rode over here straight away. Sorry for giving you guys a scare. I... Oh, yeah. Is that Mr. Packerton? Is he? It was him. He's gone now. He's finally at peace. Damn. And please don't tell me this is what's going into the baloney. I hope not. I'm not sure. There's still one room we haven't looked in yet. We need to get in there before we leave. Oh, check this out. While we were hiding, I found this key ring under the dresser. Ooh, key ring. One of these keys has to open that other bedroom. Let's check it out. Anything to get out of this room. Can we do anything else? Rest in peace, Mr. Packerton. I hope you don't have to suffer anymore. Can we use the gear boy again? No, we can't. Okay, let's go. Oh, man. Is there anywhere else we can use a gear boy? Bedroom two. We're in. Oh, mm, <laughs> what in the, oh my God. Oh no, missing people. This can't be good. There were people in the baloney. This can't be good. Freezer. Oh no, do you think it's pie again? Oh wait, is that a code? That looks like it could be a code. All right, I'm taking a picture. One, two, three, four. Is it four, one, four, two? Wait, okay, okay, okay. There's a, there, we have to decode this. It's one, one, four, one, three. One, four, one, three, according to that. Should we open it though? Let me check out this other stuff first. It's like some kind of slaughter factory in here. Oh no, there's shoes and clothes over there and an Ugg, a boot. Okay, what did I say, one, four, one, three? Okay, that was it. Oh no. Oh no, no, no. We, we're in way over our heads here. We need to get help. There are no bones. What? There aren't any bones in here. It's all just meat. Gross, 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 gross. It's skin. Dude, no, come on. <laughs> the throw up on the ground. Ash is right, we should get help. Don't you see? This is, there is no one who can help us. Every time something happens here, it's all covered up. The cult, loop, Luke, Charlie, Mrs. Sanderson, who knows what else this place is hidden. We can't just trust the cops and we didn't tell our parents because they want to go to the police. They haven't believed anything we've told them about. Then what do we do? 
I don't know, man, this just keeps getting worse. Packerton's chopping people up and serving them to... <laughs> I don't think that I'll ever look at baloney the same again. So is that the bal that's the baloney incident? <laughs> I feel pretty confident saying that. Faux news. Oh, I forgot to use Super Gear Boy. Oh, well. Well? Well, what? You asked why I don't eat the baloney, so I've told you why. All of the fantastical stories you like to spin, you're really not going to tell us what happened next. Why bother? You probably don't believe what I've said up until now anyways, and the story just gets more unbelievable from this point. Plus, you're probably going to cut it open to make, it sa to make me sound like a lunatic on TV. Give us the rest of the story and we'll air it in its entirety without cuts, I promise you. I heard you mention Todd Morrison's name before we started. Did you visit him? They won't tell me anything here. Yes, we shot a segment with on him yesterday. Is he okay? Is he still in the hospital? I'll tell you what. You finish the baloney story and I'll tell you about Todd. Okay. Before we left Mrs. Packerton's room, Ash noticed something else. Okay, let me open the gear boy. Hey guys, come look at this. How did you notice that? <laughs> There's some kind of trash chute hidden behind the painting. That's weird. This building doesn't have trash chutes. It doesn't look like it goes outside. There's no light coming in. All right, who's volunteering? <laughs> Be careful, Ash. <laughs> Stop, no, don't. I wonder where it leads. And now we have to follow her. Is Ash okay? Ash. Ash, are you okay? Ash. Oh, no, 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 this can't be happening. Please let her be okay. We have to find out where this leads to. How are we? What are we? I'm gonna go shimmy down. It's the only way. Dude, no, you're not thinking straight. What if you fall too or land on her? If she's still alive, that could kill her. Oh yeah, you're right. Let's think. Oh no. Ooh, 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 ooh. It's the other th half. Okay, what does this say? Let me take a picture. Oh man, okay, I just translated. <laughs> it took me forever. So what it is, is you have to combine the message from earlier that I took a picture of with the message now, but then it's all backwards too. But what it says is, you must unbind yourself from this world, Sal. You are not the like the others, you are unique. That is what the mysterious room is telling us. I know where it goes. What? Ow. Never mind, just go get Todd and meet me in the basement. Okay. Perfect. What's going on, Sal? What did you see? Is Ashley all right? Everything's gonna be okay. Come help me with this. Is it behind the vending machine? What? No one has used this apartment in a long time. It's in rough shape, but Addison can't afford the renovation it needs, just like the fifth floor. This is what you saw in your vision towel? It doesn't work exactly like that, it's more like a feeling of heightened intuition. Alright, you lead the way. Larry and I will offer some support however we can. It's locked. Wait, one of those keys from Packerton's look at the old apartment keys. Try it out. Oh yeah, I almost forgot about those. Perfect. There's nothing in here. Give me a minute to look around. Ooh, okay, so can we use the gear boy first of all? There's green stuff in the sink, which is not a good sign. I'm not getting anything out here with the gear boy. Bedroom one. Gear boy out. I love our little ghost hunting Sally face. Okay, and then bedroom two. Anything with the gear boy? No, but there's a strange looking carpet. The carpet is torn up here, it looks like, hmm. Guys, come check this out. It's a trap door! Dude. There must be an undocumented sub-basement level. It's definitely not in any of the blueprints that I've seen. Perhaps an old dirt cellar or something of the like? I had no idea this was here. The third key from Miss Packerton's fits in this door. Ash must be down there. It's the only place it could, uh, the chute could lead to. Let's go. Are you guys ready? I don't think I am. Man, there's everything in this. There's ghosts, there's aliens, there's cult secret trap doors. May our sight pierce the heavens and our preach and our reach be infinite and everlasting. Well, this looks bad. 
Incredible, this architecture must date back uh, multiple centuries at least. Centuries of blood and demon worship that's freaky as hell. Everything is coated in a thick layer of dust which likely means the area present is presently vacant and has been for a while. Let's hope that the malevolent history of this place remains in the past. Yeah, well, we need to get through our gate somehow. There appears to be an absence of any obvious mechanisms to move through the large gate. <laughs> They must be built into the walls. It's likely that the apparatus for opening the gate is hidden. We better split up and search the room. Okay, can I use my gear boy down here? I definitely can. So maybe we can find some more pieces of the puzzle. Can talk to Larry. Ooh, I see a bottle on the ground. Or not a bottle, a light. What is this? A glass bulb that's really thick and has an odd smell. Examine. An old leather-bound book. There's a symbol on the cover of a bird with a circle. The text is written in another language, so I can't read it. Blood is splattered on some of the pages, and the book is burned across the bottom edge. Touching this makes me feel lightheaded, as if it's producing a strange energy. Yikes. What's with all the spikes? Like, dude, you can't turn around without stubbing your toe. Still hurts like hell. Uh, it hurts like heck, though. It looks like we need to move this thing somehow. Maybe by stepping on the various trapdoors. An old leather-bound book with the symbol of a goat's head on the cover. The text is written in another language and this uh, pages smell like rotten flesh. This book gives me an oddly strong sensation of deja vu. Like on the other side? Oh, okay, we have to put a light up, I think. It's a bit strange that a place like this has light bulbs. They must have been installed later on. Though this green bulb in particular is fascinating. I've never seen a bolt quite like it. How do you turn it on? That's another mystery. There are no visible switches. I've looked all around this area. Huh. All right. Wait, am I able to walk back there? <gasps> it's empty? Oh wait, there's another letter at the bottom with my name on it! I was confused because I, I, I checked the edges of the map and it was walking for a long time and then when I was walking back it was making me walk. Anyway, I'm excited. Okay, is this page nine? Tragedy prevails once again. We lost the baby, stillborn. Lisa is devastated. She hasn't said much and hasn't left the bedroom in a few days. I tried my best to explain to Larry, but he's so young that he doesn't fully understand. He's angry at us because he thinks we lied to him about getting a baby sister. Our happy family has a giant crack in it now. Well, that's what it feels like at least. Seeing Lisa so isolated is making this even harder to bear. I hate seeing her, her in pain like this. It just breaks my heart. I'm sitting in the car with the groceries. It's freezing, but I let the cold take me. Addison Apartments, the small five-story brick building protruding from the dark forest looming over me. I want to scream, why? Why do I deserve this? But I'm not so self-centered to think that the universe owes me anything. The only thing for me to do now is be there with my family as we attempt to crawl out from this hole. So I hate to say it, but was it somehow some sort of sacrifice because of the cultist things down here? Obviously, I don't think um, Johnson, what's his name? Larry, La not Larry. Larry's the son. I don't think he knew about it, or I think it would be unlikely that he knew about it. Can I go over here? No, I can't. Okay, so let's put the bulb in. Oh, it's the gear boy. Oh, I should have known from the green. Okay, so we have to use the gear boy to activate it. That's interesting. But Todd didn't know about the technology, even though he created it. Or maybe he did. Dude, those little Opalus things just got bigger. What did? Oh, they did. Scope it out. Okay. Is it going to be something with these books? Symbol of a goat's head on the cover. The text is written in another language. Sense of deja vu. Oh, it's a puzzle. Puzzle time. Oh, I did it. May our sight pierce the heavens. Is this going to be... Okay. Oh no, is it going to force us to split up? Yeah, it is. Dude. What are you trying to give me a heart attack? That scared the crap out of me. Sorry, I got the gate open for a second, but that switch won't stay down. Ta, can you come stand on this? Larry and I can go find Ash while you make sure we don't get locked in. Sure, I can do that. Oh no, this is not good. We're gonna get separated. Ready? No, but Ash is in there somewhere, so let's go. Be safe, you two. I don't wanna lose anyone else down here. 
Where are the stairs to get out, by the way? I don't see them anywhere. Oh no, new perspective. Looks like there are two ways. We better split up. I was afraid you were gonna say that. Me too, Larry, me too. When is this ever a good idea? Stick together. Am I playing as Larry? Why do these things always happen to me? Oh, we're playing as Larry! Can we follow Sally Face? Sal went that way, need to go the other way. And I don't have a super gear boy, so we're just playing as Larry now. I love Larry, living like Larry. Okay, so what do we gotta do? I hear whispers. Crap, this place is like a maze. Enter. How do I know which place to enter? All right, let's keep looking for context clues. How am I supposed to know which door to take? There's something on the top of this one. Is that what I'm supposed to do? Some of them have things on the top. Yeah, see? There's like a symbol. Am I doing this correctly or am I not? Oh, I did it. Okay, I did something. Gotta figure out how to open this stupid gate. Okay. Those two stay down, that one goes up. Oh, I did it! <laughs> Yay! Larry was just walking back and forth for a while until I finally figured it out. Okay, door. What nightmare awaits me? I know it's Sally FaceTime. Sally Face, okay. I see immediately there's, see there's th something up there, like we saw with Larry, but this is the odd door out. The other ones have something, so I'm gonna see if that's true here. Also, do I have my gear boy? I do, so with Sally Face, we can explore a little bit more. I wonder what they are, they're like faint symbols. They almost look like eyeballs. Am I going the right way? All right, this is the last one. I think, yep, okay. But this time we have a book. Examine. An old book with a wooden cover. There's a solid black circle carved into the front that's made from a different type of wood. The frail green pages are covered in painted symbols. I can't make any sense, but it leaves a bitter taste in my mouth. Interesting. Okay, we have another puzzle here. Oh, and another door. With spikes. Did it. Woohoo. So we opened one door, but not the other. There's another door over to the right, which is interesting. I don't remember Larry having that door on his side of things. Okay. Hey, Larry! Best friend! Hey, good timing. I think we have to pull these levers at the same time to open the gate. We must have walked around in a big circle. The room behind that gate is the center of this place. It's the last room. Ash has to be back there that we know of. Oh wait, I forgot to explore things. There were things to explore. Huh? Wait, wait, no. Examine. An old book with a metal cover. It has a symbol that almost looks like an hourglass. The pages are stiff and filled with a bizarre script. Looking at this makes me tear up. I cannot feel uh, feeling a deep, unexplainable sadness. Can I use this? Strange metal object. I still feel like we have to use that at some point. Oh, but we have light bulb things here too. An old book with a metal cover. This one has complicated geometric pattern on the cover. The stiff pages are filled with bizarre script. Standing near this book, I can hear a slight ringing noise. It almost seems as though the book itself is emitting a low frequency. It's a little disorienting. And can I use the this with it at all? I wonder how we use that. Okay, let's talk to Larry. What should we do, man? I guess there's only think one thing to do. Hmm. I think this weird hex thing is from Miss Packerton's desk. It's some kind of key. Creepy. Is this all alien technology? Whoa. For we are the devourers of God? Holy shit balls. Well, okay. What's over here? Examine. It's another book pedestal, but this one has nothing on it. Oh no, there's a ton of sacrifices. Ah! 
Ash! Ash! Ash, are you okay? Ash? Is she... She's still breathing. Come on, let me help her get her up. She's been poked by a thousand bones, huh? She's awake. W what's going on? Where are we? Dude, you fell down the stupid trash chute. I thought we lost you for good. I'm so glad we found you. Are you okay? Yeah, I think so. Just a little fuzzy and sore. No broken bones. Well, none of mine, at least. Uh, man, Ash, you wouldn't believe what we went through to find you. That's all thanks to Sally. He had one of those vision thingies, and he found this old cellar door in the basement, and then we went down on those long, creepy stairs, and we found this crazy-ass cult. Temple or some shit down here, and there's all these puzzles and traps and mazes, and- Todd! Todd is holding the front gate open for us. We should go there. Wow, there's so much to take in. I can't believe all of this is right below the apartments. Thanks for coming for me. I don't know what I'd do without you guys. So all the bones are down here? As sacrifices? Because she keeps all the meat. So what are we going to do about all this? Miss Packerton has killed a lot of people in the baloney. Ugh, we can't just ignore this. Definitely not. Judging by what you guys have told me about the inner rooms of the temple and about Mrs. Packerton's apartment, it could be possible that she's just gotten herself wrapped up in the occult as well. Even if the congregation has long since dissolved, she could have stumbled upon this door just as we have. Well, maybe she's the last remaining member trying to carry out whatever their plans were on her own. You don't think she's trying to bring the red-eyed demon back, do you? Hopefully not, but we'll be prepared if she does. Man, we need to stop her. Preferably, like, before that happens. I know, going to the local police isn't an option. Maybe we should call the state police or the FBI or something. At least this time her parents can't deny what's happening. They'll help us once we show them what's below the building and what Miss Packerton's been doing. Ash is right. We, uh, we should get our parents involved this time. Maybe we should just kill her. What? Miss Packerton, maybe you should just kill her. <laughs> She's so old, she, uh, it shouldn't be that hard. Larry, <laughs> we can't just kill someone, Larry. Uh, then we'd be no better than her. Normally I would be against harming others, but in this case, Larry might be right. Todd, Larry, seriously guys? Think about all the strange, unexplainable occurrences that happen in Addison Apartments and Knockfell in general. The more I think about it, the less likely it becomes that Mrs. Packerton is acting alone. She must be getting outside help. It would explain the police cover-ups of Charlie and the Holmes family murders. There's no telling how far this corruption reaches. Goddamn. I guess that makes sense. Sal, you were saying something similar earlier today, too. I don't know, maybe this does fall on us to take care of. Maybe. You know, the biggest worries normal teenagers have about petty things like popularity and having nice hair. Not us, though. We just have to worry about saving the world, I guess. <laughs> ha ha ha. <laughs> I like our little group of friends. So, what happened? We decided to sleep on it. It was nearly morning anyway, and everyone was already beyond exhausted. And the teacher, what did you decide? Did you go to the police? Didn't have to. Turns out Packerton got in a car accident on the way home that same night. She and the other driver were killed on impact. Who was the other driver? And why? Wow, that's quite convenient. Is it the demons? You can look it up for yourself if you don't believe me. It was on the front page the next day. Beloved Knockfeld High teacher killed by drunk driver. Of course, you won't find anything about the dead bodies in her apartment or how she was feeding the students human flesh. That was all covered up. I see. Gross. I don't care if you don't believe me. It's the truth, and you said you would air the full story. Don't worry, Sal. It will be aired in full. I always keep my word, and I think the people will be very interested in hearing what you have to say. Everyone is watching you now. You spoke with a great fondness about your friend Ashley. I understand that you two were very close. You even considered her one of your best friends, along with Larry Johnson and Todd Morrison. Is that true? Yes. Have you seen this? Sally faced killer trial today for mass murder, including entire family. Sources say that the prosecutor will call Ashley Campbell to testify against the Sally Face killer. Campbell is a longtime friend of Sally Face. They were said to be very close in their high school years. I'm sorry? She saw everything with us. What? Oh no, Sally Face is crying. What about Todd? You said you'd tell me about Todd. Oh right, of course. We shot a segment on Morrison yesterday. He's still in the hospital after what happened that night. He's still out of it, unresponsive and still not talking, so we couldn't have a conversation with him. We mostly spoke with his doctor. 
I'm sorry, Sal. Apparently Morrison hasn't shown any signs of improvement. In fact, his condition has been getting worse. They said that the damage he suffered that night is irreversible. He doesn't know fantasy from reality and only wants us to die? When he is denied the release of death, he becomes extremely violent. What happened? I, I need to help him. Somehow I need to help him. Even the doctors and trained professionals haven't been able to help Todd. How do you suppose that you'll be able to? Because I know the truth. I know what really happened. I know what's wrong with Todd. Is he possessed? Oh, is he possessed? Red-Eye Demon? Reveal? Oh my god. That's really scary. <laughs> Poor Todd. That's what happened to Charlie, right? Presumably. Achievement unlocked, full of baloney. Wow. Sally face? God, you're so cool. What's going on? The red demon? Oh my god! Blood! So presumably I killed them with my sick guitar skills? 333. I'm awake, I'm awake already. This is not real. Stop, I'm scared. This is so creepy. Exit, question mark? I guess so. What else am I supposed to do? Oh no, Beelzebub? Who are you? I am Lord Beelzebub. Whoa, really? So you're like the devil or something? No, it's a nickname bestowed upon me by my kin. Family can be rough, indeed. <laughs> can I get in that door or be right back? Can I get in that door? You've only just arrived, no. You may not pass through my doorway. You must first admire my art. Your art? Yes. In the dark, there are five. The fifth you mustn't see. Of the remaining four arts, you must gaze upon three. Once you have done so, report back to me. All right, whatever you say, Edgar. <laughs> it's Beelzebub. Lord Beelzebub! Okay, bubs. <laughs> All right, be right back. So we have a puzzle, another puzzle to uncover. All right, door one. Okay, we have a rune or something. There was a knock on the door and I could see again. I was me again. Suddenly it forced my hand and this freedom was revealed to, to be only an illusion. I was forced to watch everything, a prisoner in my own mind. I have done terrible things, unforgivable things. I am so sorry. Who are you? Are those my eyes? Because I don't have eyes anymore. I am so sorry. Interesting. Okay. I'll take note of the rune, though. It's like an NP. Alright, door two. Whoa! Oh no. What have we done to deserve such agony? They were determined to devour us all. Nothing could stop them. The burning lights of the gods have faded. Their watchful eyes turned to horrified screams and then everything went black. Is this representative of the sacrifices? We will soon be gone. Because it looks a lot like what was in Mrs. Packerton's house. All right, DF rune. That looks kind of close to the style of SF for Sally Face and the band that they listen to. Okay, there's that one. What are you? Trappin' Rot? I was broken before he found me, scattered and lost. Then he looked upon my face and saw all of me at once. After being discarded by everyone else, after years of not being seen or heard, he saw me, and we were in love. And everything was perfect, until it all fell apart again. Now there's only pain. Oh, is there... riddles with this? Because being able to see 
Everything falls apart. Interesting. Door four is locked. Oh, do I have to find a code for that in door five? Okay. You know what? He doesn't want to be bothered. It's okay. I get it. Uh, can you repeat your little rhyme? In the dark there are five. The fifth you mustn't see of the remaining four arts you must gaze upon three. Once you have done so, report back to me. So... Peering eyes. Peering eyes? They are filled with regret and sorrow. Their sins? They are in a lot of pain. And trap or not? They are heartbroken. Can I go through the door now? Or be right back? Okay. Well, but I haven't gotten into door four yet. Or five, but five, you know, not exactly excited about getting into, considering there was a uh, world-shattering screen coming out of it. It's locked. One, two. Oh! One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so each of the runes has a different line, so they're numbered it's like a number keypad it's locked okay in the first room there is a or in the first room not rune <laughs> there were two runes that total up to seven i have my little notepad <laughs> so it'd be one, one two three four five six seven and then six was room two four five six Seven, eight. Is that it? It's locked. Oh, okay. I had it backwards. But that was correct, I think. Three, four, two, six, nine, seven. Okay, those aren't runes. Those are just numbers. Okay, I'm gonna write it down in my little book. I took a picture too. Three, four, two, six, nine, seven. Okay, that is the code. Is there anything else in this room? Any artwork? Her soul was corrupted by the dark, by hunger, by isolation. She suffered greatly. Through our union, we have saved her. We are the endless echoes with oblivion. We are all that is, was, and ever will be. Is that... What? We are infinite and everlasting. We are the void. Is that the lady, the um, one that got murdered at the very beginning since there's a camera up there and there's a camera missing from our actual apartments? I'm assuming we can't get into five considering it's packaged up, so can I go through now? Once you go through the door, there's no going back. Thank you. You're welcome. See ya, bubs. <laughs> Bye, bubs. Should we go? Let's just go. the universe TV what's past it though nothing <laughs> nothingness there is nothingness turn it on are we getting transported excuse me Who are you? Hello? Is anyone listening? Is anyone there? Please, I need help. I can't remember who I am. It's so dark here. I remembered a blinding light and then there was burning pain washed over me. Then I was here. I can't shake this feeling of loss and despair. Am I dead? I can't do anything else. Exit. Oh my god! Teenage Sally face! Hey! Oh man, we look so cool. And we have different masks up on the wall. Oh man! Is this the next chapter? When is the next chapter starting? Okay, this feels very much next chaptery. So even though we didn't get a starting screen, I am going to leave this episode here. Um, and when we get started next, we'll just assume that we're in chapter four, or we've got to be really close because we've gotten a huge chunk of the story. We're in a new time frame for Sally Face, um, and I've been recording for way too long because I've been secret hunting for most of this playthrough, so 
<laughs> and also figuring out some of the codes and messages and everything, which has been fun but time consuming. So on that note, I'm going to say farewell, friends. Thank you so much for being here. Remember, we're not alone out there, and I'll see you in the next episode of Sally Face. Bye-bye. <laughs>